Christina's Kitchen. I'm so happy to have you guys join us tonight. And what's up? You got a crown on your head. I have a crown on my head? Yes, it's a filter. I have a filter on my head. <laughs> Are you gonna turn my filters off or do I need to help you? I have no idea how you got filters on. I'm in trouble. Here it is. You gonna take it off? There, there. it's <laughs> No filter now? Yeah, but that was pretty pretty good with the crown, I guess. <laughs> Should have left it. <laughs> well, I am just really excited to be able to have a class tonight to do uh, winter squash and I am nervous like crazy because I hate talking to camera so I have a live audience I've got my husband uh, who is helping on the cameras I have uh, Macy who is helping me monitor comments and uh, Jonathan is here so that I've got somebody else to smile at besides two people so. <laughs> anyway uh, Daniel, will you lead us in a word of prayer so we can start? Okay. Let's pray together. Kind and loving Father in heaven, thank you for this day that you have given to us, for the food that you've created for us to eat and enjoy. And now as we share together in this class online, I pray that you will bless us and bless those who are watching in Jesus' name. So, because uh, I need people and I need uh, your interaction, I am asking you guys to comment. Tell me you're watching, say hi, ask questions, uh, post goofy stuff to make me laugh. I don't care what you do, um, but uh, give me some interaction and feedback if you are watching. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. So, uh, we are going to do winter squash tonight. It is that time of year when winter squash is in season and everybody's like, what do I do with it? Uh, it's all uh, been harvested in the local farms and uh, the grocery stores are now putting it on sale. And a lot of people are saying, hey, uh, cheap decorations. And they're buying these beautiful, tasty squash and they're like putting it on their tables like I've got on my table over here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. Is there a way we can move the camera? Because I feel like I'm wall-eyed. I've got one eye looking at this one and one eye looking at this one and my nose is looking at Jonathan. And uh, <laughs> I'll look at the same direction. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So anyway, and I propose to you to go ahead and buy those squash for decoration, but don't let them rot on your table cook with them before they go back because winter squash tastes amazing and there's so many different kinds i'm only going to cover a couple tonight um, if i had more different varieties i'd have them all here instead of these three little ones but the ones i have here tonight i've got uh, spaghetti squash uh, and we have uh, acorn squash and we've got butternut squash and uh, these are the ones that we'll actually be using tonight um, in the class and I'm going to tell you more about. And there's some of the more common ones. Of course, other ones include like um, your delicata. Uh, of course, the most familiar one is pumpkin, right? And there are different kinds of pumpkin. There's the great big, you know, jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. And then there's the little bitty pie pumpkins. Um, and there's like a whole host of squash. I wish I had my chart here of like, you know, 20 kinds of winter squash. And the, the beauty is it all tastes good, but some is used for different things. Like for instance, uh, your jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, the great big ones, are good for jack-o'-lanterns. They, <laughs> they, the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin is actually a pumpkin that's specifically bred for jack-o'-lanterns. They have almost no meat inside and they're completely hollow and uh, it makes them perfect for jack lanterns they're easy to carve out and clean out and whatever but if you want to make a pumpkin pie out of one of those like a great big squash you might get like you know maybe two cups of squash out of the whole giant thing because there's just not much there 
Pine pumpkins, on the other hand, are small, but you can get more uh, squash meat out of a pie pumpkin, a little pie pumpkin, than you can a large jack-o'-lantern. Uh, because they're dense, they're they're uh, very thick all the way through. They just have a little seed pocket in the very middle of it, um, and they have a better flavor. Uh, generally, pie pumpkins are not quite so watery. Uh, they're more creamy and uh, have better flavor, and of course, they're better for pumpkin pie. Uh, in the squash world, if you're looking to uh, for a squash that can replace pumpkin kind of has that same creamy uh, texture and nice flavor. Generally speaking, your butternut squash is your pumpkin pie replacement. Um, it has a very similar flavor to the pie pumpkin, uh, very similar texture, it's not real watery, uh, and there's a lot of meat in this, it's not very hollow. Um, and so the butternut squash is your basically pumpkin replacement. You can pretty much use butternut squash one to one. Now I want to tell you a little fun fact, and that is, um, Macy, can you get? Or I don't know if we have any. Is there any canned pumpkin back there? If there may not be, I may use the last one. You know those cans of canned pumpkin that you can get? Um, not the pumpkin pie filling but the actual like canned pumpkin, cooked pumpkin, um, those cans are not actually filled with pumpkin. It's actually filled with all kinds of winter squash and they cook it all and they mix it all together until it's about the right color and texture and they put it in the can and they call it pumpkin. So if you buy that uh, can, um, which I think I'm out of right now, uh, in the store, you're actually buying winter squash. Uh, and a whole mixture of it. So that's just a little fun fact. Um, I haven't heard from anybody yet. Has anyone commented? Got a couple comments. Um, someone said thank you for sharing, and someone said I'm guilty of the decorations. <laughs> thank you, thank you for your comments. Keep them coming because otherwise I feel like I'm talking to a blank wall. <laughs> And yes, uh, I think all of us are guilty of the decoration thing. Um, but uh, I want to see more people eat them. I grew up in, uh, well, I grew up all over. But in my teen years, I spent in Washington State. And there we grew a lot of winter squash. Um, and my favorite one was one that I've never seen down here. It's a big giant squash called sweet meat. And it's the sweetest squash you ever ate. You'd, like, it tasted like sweeter than sweet potatoes. Um, and uh, one of those big sweet meat squash, if you made pumpkin pie out of it, uh, you had to decrease your sugar in your pumpkin pie recipe because the squash itself was so sweet. Um, but uh, just um, to get started, how to cook squash. That's probably the worst thing, right? You know, you take a squash like that and you take a knife and you know, you feel like you can beat it all day and like you'll never get the thing open unless you have like a hatchet or you know an axe or something like get that thing open. But uh, my favorite way to cook squash is whole. You can take this squash and put it in a pot of boiling water, which is what I'm going to do right now. Um, I've got my pot of boiling water in the stove because I need this for something else. Um, but you don't have to do anything to it. Just stick it in a pot of boiling water and boil it for about 45 minutes to an hour until it's soft. And then you can cut it open. It's easy to scoop the seeds out, easy to scoop the meat out, and you have cooked squash. Second easiest way is to put it in the oven and bake it whole. Uh, you can lay it on a cookie sheet. Um, I prefer that method. If you put it on the oven rack and it starts oozing out liquid, you don't have anything to catch it. So I usually put it on a cookie sheet and just stick it in the oven, make it at 350 until it's soft. Um, one thing I will say about baking in the oven, this is wood. This will catch on fire in your oven, this stem right here. So before you put it in the oven, break the stem off or cut the stem off with a knife. Um, and usually, like a potato, I like to poke a couple holes in it so it doesn't explode in the oven. But uh, since I'm going to go put this in a pot of boiling water right now, um, I'm not going to worry about poking or anything. I'm just going to go stick it in the water. Before you go, someone says, thanks for this class. Squash is delicious, but I never seem to take the time. 
And then someone else says, great time to have this class. I had butternut spaghetti and pumpkin now. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> hey, look, I even broke the stem off. <laughs> All right, Lexi, can you make me my pot of water on the stove? We're going to stick this in water. So, um, I have taken like gigantic squash, you know, really big. Yeah, thank you. And uh, put it pull it in the oven. It takes about two hours to bake it whole, but it sure takes it. Uh, it saves you an axe to chop the thing open. So we're just going to. You want to bring that over here? I'm just going to take this squash. And we're just going to put it in the water like this. And you see it floating in the water there? How easy is that? I mean, like, you just have to make sure you're in the kitchen while it's cooking so it don't boil over or something. But just let it cook. All right, we're just going to put the lid on it and we're going to carry it to the kitchen and put it on the stove. So that's our spaghetti squash. Here, Lexi, can I do it back to you? Go ahead and put it on. until it boils and then turn it down so it simmers. And remind me at the end of the class to bring that thing out because I'll forget it's there. <laughs> Anyone have a timer? Uh, set a timer for uh, 45 minutes and we'll go check it out. All right, so that is my favorite method. Either bake or boil whole because like I said, it's so fast, it's so easy. Um, but there's some recipes that you don't want just mushed up squash. And uh, so for those recipes, um, I'm gonna show you a couple more ideas. So first of all is the butternut squash. Butternut squash, like I said, is like pumpkin. And one thing I like about it is the skin is a lot softer. Um, it's uh, not super hard like some of your really really hard squashes. You don't have to have a hatchet to cut a butternut squash. Um, you do need a very sharp knife, which I don't know when the last time Daniel sharpened this knife is. So it's actually not a sharp knife right now, but we'll make it through. Uh, so I just take it and chop the end off. And uh, there we go. So there I've got my stem chopped off. And then I'm going to chop the other end off. So now it'll stand up or do whatever I want it to do, right? Um, so let's see, what do I need? I'm going to be making a recipe that needs one and a half cups of butternut squash, which I'm guessing is going to be about, I'm going to guess is about half of this squash here, maybe a little more. So um, if I need cooked butternut squash, and I need it fast, I'm in a hurry. What I do is I just cut it into pieces like this. And I have boiling water, I've got a steamer kettle here. And we're going to put this butternut squash in the steamer kettle. It's been boiling for a while, so we may have to. We're just gonna set this in the steamer kettle here. And we're going to steam this, these pieces of squash. Can you see it there? Oh, maybe. Sorry, Maisie. <laughs> All right, so this, we are going to steam this butternut squash until it's tender, which usually takes, it's kind of like potatoes. It usually takes about uh, 15 minutes or so. So we're going to turn it on high and we're going to let it boil. So that's a second way, very quick way of making cooked squash when you just need soft cooked squash. So you might as well stay over here, don't get too far away. Because when you cut a squash, uh, you have seeds, right? That's one of the things about the squash. You can see the seeds here in our butternut squash. You just take a spoon. Can you see it okay? Can you come up a little closer? You just take a spoon and you can scrape out the seeds of your
cedar butternut squash or any squash. All squash have these seeds inside them. Now, of course, when you cook it whole, the seeds come out easier than when you do it raw. But I just try to get all the seeds out and as many of those strings out as I possibly can. Um, if you have a grapefruit spoon with teeth on the end, that works even better because it helps scrape those um, little strings off well. Can you see okay, Macy? Mm -hmm. Get it in nice and close. Now some people, obviously I'm not doing it, but some people actually save those seeds and they're probably hollering at me right now, don't throw those seeds away, they're good. And if you want, you can. You can save them, you can dry them, you can use them to plant more squash. Um, or uh, um, some of the squash seeds are actually edible and you can um, bake them and eat them. Um, so that's a... Uh, but I'm too lazy to do that. No, I have actually done it, but I'm not doing it today. All right, so another thing that you can do with your butternut squash uh, is you can peel it. And when I peel it, I usually leave it whole, but I have it so that it can stand up and I can peel without hurting myself. Just peel it like this. cut your fingers off when you're peeling. The thing I found is uh, never take, I do not recommend this, don't take a little paring knife and try to just peel it like this because for one you're going to slice your thumb open because this is really tough and for another you're going to break your paring knife <laughs> and I've done both so what can I say, I learned the hard way. But uh, that's why I use a butcher knife and then just very carefully cut the skin off that way. But once you cut your skin off, uh, then you can um, you can chop it into chunks. If you want like diced butternut squash, like say you were doing diced uh, squash for soup, um, you can just cut them into to chunks. I see a piece. Um, can you see this? I know it's very small. You might have to come in very close. <laughs> I want you to look at this piece of butternut squash here. Uh, you see little veins and a little, um, what looks like a hard ridge right here. That is actually a piece of skin that I missed. Um, you do not want veins. If you see veins, those are actually like hard strings that are part of the outer shell and they don't taste good. And even once they're cooked, they're still hard. So you want to make sure you get all of that off uh, when you're peeling your squash. One thing I like to do with diced squash like this, like this diced butternut squash, is I like to mix it with um, other vegetables like potatoes or carrots um, or cauliflower or zucchini or whatever vegetables you like and roast them in the oven. Uh, oven roasted uh, butternut squash is absolutely amazing. And if any of you came to my cooking class last year, we did a fall soup, uh, a fall vegetable soup. It had sweet potatoes, um, which is another thing that's nice to mix with butternut squash. We had sweet potatoes and butternut squash and carrots um, and uh, onion and garlic and celery and quinoa and we made an amazing fall soup out of all those veggies. And that was really, really good. Um, if you missed that class, I think it's on uh, our Facebook Live still. If you go to last year, you can still watch it. <laughs> William Devon says, Bill says, pass me a muffin. I know you have muffins made with pumpkin and squash. Oh, yes, the muffins. We can't forget pumpkin muffins. Uh, what would we do without them? And yes, we just started making pumpkin muffins again here at the restaurant uh, just last week. Um, 
but uh, that's another thing that's really fun to make with your cooked squash or your cooked pumpkin is muffins. Um, what other things do you like to make with pumpkin and squash? If you have a favorite thing you like to do with squash, let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, some of my favorite things to do with squash, besides roasting it, uh, is um, a pumpkin curry. Pumpkin curry over rice is really good. And of course, I already said putting pumpkin soup. And when I say pumpkin, now you know. You can use like winter squash instead of pumpkin, right? It doesn't have to be always pumpkin. Um, there we have it all chopped up. It's all ready to roast in the oven. Or you can even put it in your air fryer. You remember uh, one of our previous classes we showed how to use an air fryer? Um, you can put that in it and roast it that way, or you can put it in the oven. Um, butternut squash cooks really fast. If I put it in soup, I put it in as one of the last things um, because uh, it's very tender. It cooks up very quickly, and so um, it actually cooks faster than carrots. Uh, so carrots are about 10 minutes. Butternut squash is like 5 to 8 minutes if you were just steaming it. Um, roasting in the oven, it takes about um, 30 minutes. You want to stir it every 15 minutes. Um, and it tastes amazing with just like a little bit of salt and onion powder on it. It's so good. Uh, I love butternut squash. Let's see how this squash is doing over here. It's not quite done yet, so we're going to give it a few more minutes. All right, so maybe I'll throw these pieces in there. Because unless you want me to oven roast, that's too small of a batch to oven roast. I told you how to oven roast them. You can go home and try it. I just got to throw them in here uh, to steam along with our big chunks. They'll probably be done before the big chunks are, even though we gave the big chunks a head start. All right. So um, I wanted to talk to you about acorn squash. Acorn squash is kind of like its own animal. <laughs> you cannot use acorn instead of pumpkin. Wait, I thought you didn't eat animals. Well, I'm sorry. It was, that was a like a, an expression. An expression. Oh. Yeah, it's its own squash. Is that better? That's better. <laughs> Are there any other comments that we're missing? No comments. Okay. Um, so acorn squash is one of those things uh it has more it's more of a watery texture and it has a very distinct savory flavor it does not taste good with anything sweet um, it's going to be total savory and my favorite way to cook acorn squash besides of course just like cooking it and put some like salt on it or whatever um is that uh, i like to make stuffed squash Acorn squash is the perfect thing for stuffed squash. And so what I do is I just break that stem off, which you can see it came off very easily. And uh, then I just take the squash, and this is one of those um, that's a little bit harder to cut, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard. And that's what looks inside. You can see it's very white. Uh, it doesn't have much color like the orange butternut squash did. Um, it's usually white inside. 40, it was 45 minutes. I'll set one. I'll put a 30 minute time. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. what it is. So, I'm just going to take the seeds out of this squash and just scoop them out. You can see it scoops out very nicely. And what I do when I make stuffed squash, I'll tell you what to do and what not to do because I've done it all. Um, the first thing that I do after I scrape out the seeds is I put them in a casserole dish uh, side by side, just lay them all, all the halves out, however many I'm going to make. Um, I usually make one half per person, that's one serving. Um, and I put them in a casserole dish and I cover them with a, either a lid or tin foil or something to cover it up. And I put it in the oven for 30 minutes, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, and just let it bake. Um, so I will sprinkle a little bit of salt on it so that salt can start permeating into the squash. And while that's baking, then I make my stuffing to go inside it. 
And you can make whatever kind of stuffing you want. Uh, you can make a stuffing out of rice. Uh, you can make a stuffing out of um, a mixture of rice and wild rice. That makes a really pretty stuffing. Uh, or my favorite, personally, is to make a stuffing with quinoa. And uh, so you cook your grain, whether it be your rice or your quinoa or wild rice or whatever it is, you cook that, uh, I put it with country style seasoning um, and some herbs actually cooked into the grain while it's cooking. So it absorbs all that flavor. And then uh, in a separate pot, I will season onion and garlic. Uh, and uh, if you want a sweet, uh, flavor you can put chunks of apples in it um, and then when that's all oh, and celery sorry onion garlic and celery um, all seasoned together uh, then you add that to your quinoa and uh, season it to taste I like to put some cranberries in some chopped pecans or walnuts um, get that nice um, holiday stuffy look and then um, since these are halfway done cooking now, they've been in the oven for like 45 minutes, about the time it takes you to make the stuffing. Uh, you scoop that stuffing into your squash, put the cover back on it, and put it back in the oven for another 45 minutes. And uh, it comes out with beautiful soft baked squash uh, with the beautiful stuffing like baked into it. And the flavor is absolutely amazing. Um, it just makes that squash shine. And uh, that's actually one of the um, uh, entrees that we like to serve here in November and December. It's one of my uh, holiday favorites. And uh, I highly recommend trying it. William says, we will try roasting butternut squash. Thanks for the tip. And then he also says, love your quinoa stuffing. And then Sharon Rose says that she's watching. Yay! Thank you guys for commenting. It makes my life so much easier when I have some interaction. <laughs> I can't stand looking at four walls. All right, so that's the scoop on acorn squash. And obviously, I don't have two hours to demonstrate the whole thing. I wish I did. Um, but there are a lot of neat recipes online. Is your I stuffing recipe on your ideas. website? If it's not on our website, it will be. OK, uh, christinaskitchen.org. Yeah, right. If it's not there, it will be soon when I have time to type more recipes. Yes, please. <laughs> so, um, let me check this squash over here. It's almost done. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and start chopping some ingredients for one more recipe. Um, I am going to show you one of my favorite ways to serve squash besides the usual, you know, pumpkin pie, pumpkin pudding, pumpkin ice cream pumpkin muffins, you know, all the fun pumpkin things that we like to do. And that's one that you may not think about, uh, and that is uh, our burritos. Our black bean burritos that we serve here at the restaurant, one of the primary ingredients is uh, either pumpkin or squash uh, or sweet potatoes. And uh, we do that all year long here at the restaurant. And uh, so I'm going to show you how we make those. And I'm hoping that that butternut squash will be soft enough when I've got everything else chopped that we can throw it all together. Beth Ann says she's watching too. Hi, Beth Ann. <laughs> Keep the comments coming, everyone. I like to hear from you. OK, so my recipe for black bean burritos. Uh, first of all, if you're going to make burritos, kind of like we made with fajitas, was that last month? Month before? Last month I did fajitas. Uh, you need onion. You can't do burritos without onion, right? Uh, so we're just going to chop some onion here. And uh, somehow we didn't get the chopper, Macy. Thank you. So I'm just going to peel my onions here. Oh, I wish you were here to smell the that squash. Jonathan gets to smell it. Yep. Can you smell it? Smell good? good? Oh, it smells amazing. Now I'm going to start crying. I'm peeling onions. <laughs> I think I cried on the last cooking class when I was doing fajitas. How did I manage to cry two months in a row? All right. We've got girls gave me this compost bucket and I'm piling all my compost on the table. Here we go. Look at that. We can clean up my mess. Hi, 
right, so the recipe calls for one medium onion, but these onions are so pathetically small, it's going to take at least two to get one onion out of it. to it as well. Someone needs to find a lid for these onions because I'm dying over here. <laughs> yeah, the shut off valve to stop from crying. Alright, so now we're going to put in some red pepper into our burritos. You can use red pepper, orange pepper, yellow pepper, green pepper, whatever you want, but the flavor is best with red and orange. Um, you see how I chopped the end of the pepper off and the stem popped right out? And then I just have to grab the seeds and my pepper is cleaned out easy. How's that? And then we just have to run through that same chopper again like we did with the onions. We have garlic, um, we have butternut squash, 
We should be almost done now. Rice and black beans. I'm gonna drain the beans. I don't want all the liquid in my beans. So we're just going to drain off our black beans. So there's our black beans. So even though these are called black bean burritos, they're actually not just black bean burritos, as you can see. We're actually putting a lot of other stuff in it. We're going to need the two cup measuring cup. Is anybody giving me any more comments? Anybody talking? Marie says they are my favorite. That was a while ago. All right. Thank you, Marie. I'm glad you're on here too. So we have some butternut squash now. Thank you. So these uh, little steamed butternut squash are all nice and soft now. We're gonna throw them in our measuring cup. I need one and a half cups of butternut squash. So. Save some time, I'm gonna use them. And then I'm gonna use some of this that we, we uh, steamed with the skin on. And I'm still crying for that on you. <laughs> so here is a very hot piece of butternut squash. You see it okay? Behind the measuring cup. There, is that better? That's better. So then you just take it and you scoop it right off your skin. And this is so hot, I can hardly touch it. You can see it's nice and soft now, which is what you want. Smashing up nicely. A little bit more, and we'll be at our one and a half cups that we want. There we go. I see a piece of, oh, that's a piece of butter meat. It's fine. All right, so there's our one and a half cups of mashed. Butternut squash. And a little bit that's extra. We're just going to take it out and put it over here. And uh, Macy, if you could, if you don't care to dump this water out for me, and then bring the pot back, and I'm going to use it to cook this onion. questions on winter squash, be sure and holler at me. Because I by no means have exhausted the whole list. There 
go. Thank you so much. So we are going to cook our onion and garlic. And I might need the water. Notice I have no oil in this. So I'm just going to warm it up. If it starts to stick, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it to keep it from sticking. I don't want to, I don't want to soak it in water. You just need enough just to keep it from sticking to the bottom of the pot. some people. Need some interaction. You guys are a quiet bunch. <laughs> Just being observant. Daniel wants to eat it. Are you hungry? No? It's making me hungry. I'm making you hungry? You can talk. You don't have to be quiet. <laughs> uh, so we pre-cooked this uh, brown rice yesterday. What I like to do is I like to cook a batch of rice and while it's hot, I put it in the jars and let it seal and I put it in the fridge and then whenever I need rice, I can add it to my recipe or I can warm it up um, and serve it with veggies or whatever I wanna do. I always have rice on hand. And uh, if you put the rice in the jar while it's hot, when it's freshly cooked, uh, the jar will seal. And when it's sealed, it keeps your rice fresh for at least a week. Um, and that, really really nice uh, so like for this recipe I just need one and a half cups of rice I just had to go to the fridge and pull it out and the rice was already done uh, the same with our cheese sauce we put rice in our cheese sauce uh, if I've got rice already cooked in the fridge it's all ready to go um, so that is a way to save time uh, when you're planning for the week just to cook a little pot of rice uh, rice will stretch out any meal and leftover rice will help you in all your recipes. Don't put hot rice immediately in jars without water, though. <laughs> You'll break your jars. Oh, yes, Macy reminded me, if you're gonna put your hot rice in the cold jars, warm up your jars first. Uh, so we take our empty jars and we fill them with hot water, let it sit for a minute and then dump it out, and then put the hot rice in. And that helps keep from jars being broken. Thank you, Macy. All right, this onion's almost done. So I'm gonna put my seasonings in now. I already have garlic in there. Uh, so we're gonna put in, um, except I have no measuring spoons. I need a teaspoon. We were busy today when we tried to put our cooking class together, so we uh, didn't have time to pull out everything we needed before the class started. Thank you. So we're gonna put in a teaspoon of cumin and a teaspoon of paprika. That's our spices that's going in here. It's not super spicy, it just adds flavor. And uh, I'll use this, I guess. I need, um, no, I got it right here. One and a half teaspoons of salt. So that's our seasoning. And I just cook that into the onions. Do you want to see what I'm doing? You see, we've got the onion and garlic 
and seasoning is all in there now. The onion is uh, turning clear, which is what you want. And then we're going to add the red bell pepper. the pepper and I'm going to turn my burner down to medium now because I don't want it to burn on the bottom. Get some of that juice out of that pepper. You can see it's moistening everything up now. That way it doesn't burn to the bottom of our pan. Now we can turn the burner up a little more. And we're going to add next, um, we're going to add our rice and our black beans. So here's the black beans and the rice. I'm going to guess because I've got squash in my measuring cup. So I need one and a half cups of rice. Pretty much you've got equal portions in case you're noticing. Equal portions of onion, bell pepper, rice, black beans, and squash. They're all about the same amount of each thing. Looks pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's like Christmas. We're just going to let that rice warm up a little bit and absorb some of that flavor, the seasonings, since this was cold rice. I'm breaking up some of those clumps of cold rice here. The rice is starting to warm up now, and I've got all the clumps broken up, so I'm ready to add the butternut squash So the butternut squash is what makes it creamy, and if you have a stringy squash uh, or stringy sweet potatoes, I actually uh, like to throw my butternut squash or my sweet potatoes or whatever I'm using into the food processor and grind it up really, really um, creamy because then it's not stringy at all. This one's not too stringy, so we're going to go ahead and use it as is. Now that we got that all mixed and it's getting nice and warm, which is what we want, the last thing that we're going to add in here is cheese. Because of course, you know, it's not black bean burritos without cheese. You can use any kind of cheese you want. Uh, you can use uh, Daya mozzarella shreds. Um, you can use uh, any kind of mozzarella or cheddar. Uh, whatever flavor you like in your burritos, you can use it in. But what we are going to put in today is we are going to put in our homemade melty cheese. And uh, this is our, our recipe is on our website. Uh, if you go to christinaskitchen.org uh, and you look under sauces, you will find our cheese recipe uh, for our melty cheese. And you can see how nice and creamy it is. Uh, this is made out of cashews and brown rice. Uh, that's the main ingredient. And what makes it orange is uh, pimentos. 
And so that's, uh, that's the main ingredients of this. And of course, it's got lemon juice and salt um, and uh, onion and garlic in it. Lots of flavor. And, and so, yeast. and yes, and it has some nutritional yeast as well to give it like the cheesy flavor. So this is going to go in. We want about three quarters of a cup of cheese. That looks close enough, right? So we're just gonna mix that up in there. And that makes it nice and creamy and cheesy. Wow, look at that. And once it's all nice and hot like that, uh, it's ready to go. Um, very simple, very quick, doesn't take very long. Uh, Macy, can you bring me one hot jar? Mm -hmm. Or two hot jars, it'll probably take two um, quart jars. So what I do with this filling is the same thing as I do with my rice. Uh, I take uh, quart jars that are hot and I put the filling in it and put the lid on and then uh, let it cool and stick it in the fridge and let it seal. And uh, then you can have a uh, burrito filling anytime you want a burrito for the next week, uh, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna make you all hungry now. <laughs> I'm gonna shut this off because this is done. I'll put the lid on it for just a second here. going to take a whole wheat burrito shell or tortilla shell or whatever type of tor tortilla you want to use. And I'm just going to, oh. I'm cutting up my corner here, you're right. I'm just going to scoop some filling on here. Is there any more of that tomato left in the fridge, the sliced tomato from today? And lettuce? So you can either like just do it like this, like a burrito, or you can put lettuce and tomato on it before you roll it up. But I pull the sides in and then pull over and fold over. And look at that. Isn't that a beautiful burrito? Looks good enough to eat. <laughs> All ready to go. I don't know if they're gonna bring me lettuce and tomato or not, but we like to serve it with um, sliced tomato and lettuce and then our fresh homemade salsa and sweet potato chips. And that just makes an incredible meal all together. Um, and then our, the rest of our filling, we've got some hot jars here. We're just going to put this filling into the jars. We do have some, look at that. All right. I'm just gonna make one more, is that okay? So I'm gonna make one more. This one's gonna have lettuce and tomato in it too. That way you can see how to do it. It's a little bit of a challenge. When you put the lettuce and tomato in it, you have to put a little less burrito filling in it. Just so you don't overflow your, your tortilla, which I always do. I always overflow it. That's a Murphy's Law. Um, or maybe it's Christina's law, I don't know which. <laughs> but uh, we've got some sliced tomato here. So I like to put a half a sliced tomato on it. 
And then I take my lettuce and I break it off where the stem starts. So that way you don't have the pokey stem inside your burrito. So there's your piece of lettuce. And we're gonna put that, and I put the lettuce on the side that I'm gonna roll towards. Does that make sense? So when I fold it in, I'm gonna fold it over the lettuce. If you wanna grab the funnel, you can put the rest of that in that jar. Fold this towards the lettuce. I'm gonna flip this up over the bottom. And then I'm gonna use my lettuce to hold the burrito filling inside the burrito while I roll it up. And then my fingers stay clean. So I'm just gonna roll it right up. And there it is with the lettuce and tomato inside it. So now we just need uh, Lexi to bring us some, uh, can you bring me some salsa and chips? And we'll finish up this plate and make it look pretty. How's that sound? So I usually take my extra lettuce Hopefully Daniel's hungry because I just made a plate. <laughs> if he's not, Jonathan is. <laughs> All right, so here we've got uh, our lettuce. Perfect. Down the middle. There's our salsa. And there's some chips. Here we go. Look at this. This is our fresh homemade salsa. And give me a spoon. Here we go. Are you getting hungry yet? That's the alarm for the British wash in the kitchen. Oh, perfect. Lexi, you want to see if it's soft? That's our 40 minute timer. And there we go. And then I like to put a little extra tomato there. What do you think? How's that for a plate? Looks good to me. And who would have thought that you would see this on a day I'm talking about winter squash. <laughs> you can so, hide the strangest ingredients in anything. Awesome. Okay, you want to um, go ahead and bring it in here? I'll see what it looks like. So, I'm going to set this over here and we're going to check on our spaghetti squash and see how it's faring. Wait a minute, you're going to do it. Um, there's a partial jar in there. You can put it in the partial jar. I'm just going to take this. See, here's my burrito filling. And I just clean off the lid so it's all nice and clean. And then we put our lid and ring on it. And that's where you go in the fridge. Several people said they'll be over for dinner. <laughs> Jonathan, you need to read me the comments as they come in. <laughs> You're not going to read? Okay, just tell Daniel when you see a comment. He can read them. June, I missed the mixing and cooking. Uh, Larry, yum, looks great. So, Love your burritos. Kathy Puerto. No, oh, you're right. It's not done yet. So, the squash is not done cooking yet. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it open, and then we can finish cooking it while it's open. Because I want you to see inside, and I don't want to drag this cooking class on any longer. This is such a big squash, it needs another 15 minutes to cook. Oh, if I can get this thing out. We'll get it this way. That's why we have a steamer basket. <laughs> we'll dump it out. There's more than one way to do it. Let's 
It's easy to cut that way. It's a lot easier to cut after it's cooked. It's just hot. Except that it's hot. I think I'd rather cut it cold and hard than hot and soft. Oh, well, you haven't tried to cut it cold and hard. <laughs> <laughs> squash not quite finished so I'm gonna let it cook like this so it goes faster but if you were if this was done cooking you would scoop the seeds out which they come out real easy now that the spaghetti squash is soft and then you just take your spoon and you gently scoop the uh, spaghetti squash out of the squash into your bowl and I just like to season it um, with uh, some salt and onion powder, um, garlic powder, a uh, little nutritional yeast if you like that, and maybe a tiny bit of olive oil. It doesn't take much. Um, and season that together, and it tastes absolutely amazing. But I'm sorry I can't demonstrate that part because it still needs about 20 minutes to cook. <laughs> but I hope I've given you some ideas on how to cook squash. Um, and if you have some more ideas that you've thought of while watching this, uh, either now live or later on, uh, feel free to comment uh, or message me. Uh, tell me what you think because I'm always open to new ideas and there's always so much that we can learn from each other. I don't claim to know everything. I just know what I've learned from experience. Um, so I just want to thank you all for joining me tonight and don't forget to join us again next month right on your calendars. It's always the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. Uh, right here on our Christina's Kitchen Facebook page. And uh, Daniel, would you mind closing us with a word of prayer? Sure. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you again for this class that we're able to have together for each one who is watching and those who will watch later. And Lord, I just pray that you will bless each one as we go our separate ways, that each of us will prosper and be in health as, uh, as you have will for us to do, and I pray that you will uh, bless us for the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for coming. I love you all. I send you all virtual hugs. I wish you were all here in person, but don't forget to come and join us again next month. And of course, if you want to see me in person, I'm here at the restaurant here at Christina's Kitchen in Whitley City, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, we're open from 9.30 to 5.30. And we serve lunch from 11 to 3. If you come on Thursday, you'll see my mom. And where are you serving the black bean burritos again? We had the black bean burritos today. That was our entree today. And if you're on our delivery route, we'll be delivering them this Thursday to Somerset. So if you want one, you better call us tomorrow morning and order it. Um, Wednesday morning, we take all of our orders for our delivery route. And then as far as when we'll serve them here at Christina's Kitchen again, we serve them about every three weeks because that's one of our most popular entrees. So uh, watch our Facebook post. We post the menu every Monday for the whole week. You can see what we're having, and you'll know when we're going to have black bean burritos again. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful night.